Sarah Canning. I'm a proud Butchell and Cullerly woman with ties to Waka Waka people. I'm the founder, owner and all-round creative force behind Roots and Mirigal, a Toowoomba-based First Nations business that specialises in handcrafted jewellery and accessories. Today in my workshop, we'll be showing you how to make one of my best-selling products, raffia hair combs. These combs will incorporate a very basic traditional First Nations Australian weave. Weaving has been used by First Nations people in Australia for tens of thousands of years and many of these traditional weaves hold stories and memories passed down through countless generations. Today's workshop is brought to you by Youth Connect and Toowoomba Regional Council in South West Queensland Regional Arts Service Network. For this workshop you will need one or more hair combs. Any hair comb can be used for this activity. Raffia, a weaving needle. You can purchase these at most good craft stores. A hot glue gun, which is optional, and a pair of scissors. Before we begin, you will need to prepare your needle by threading it with the raffia. Today, I will be using natural raffia. The great thing about raffia is that you can dye it. I specialize in using and experimenting with plant materials, but you can use any dye product. I really enjoy using plant materials because the colors feel more natural and the plant material usually decides what color it's going to be. For this one, I've used tree resin to get a reddish brown color, and here's one that I've used rosemary to get a greener look. Other popular plant dye materials are eucalyptus leaves and avocado skins. What color would you dye your raffia? Are there any plants you would like to experiment with? With the front of the comb facing towards you, thread the raffia through the teeth of the comb with the longer piece coming out from the front and tie it off with a knot. Place the shorter piece along the back of the comb. We'll call this the tail for now. Now you're going to make a loop around two fingers, your middle finger and your pointer finger. While holding the comb like this, it can feel uncomfortable and awkward at first, but it will get easier with practice and time. Wrap the raffia around your fingers, moving away from you. Now bring the raffia down and back up through the teeth of the comb. Thread your needle through the loop you made with your fingers and pull it through, tightening it down onto the comb to form a knot. Repeat this process across the top of the comb, doing two or three stitches in each tooth, depending on your desired thickness. Typically, one piece of raffia should cover a whole comb, but in the case that it runs out across the top, leave the leftover strand of raffia hanging and repeat step two, placing the end strand with the tail strand along the back of the comb. Trim the end piece and tail if needed. To finish off your comb, turn the comb over so that the back is facing towards you. Thread the needle under the stitches. Thread the raffia through three or four stitches at a time until you get to the end. This will hold your raffia securely so it doesn't tangle, but optionally you can just put a dab of hot glue to secure it down. And that's it! You've made your first raffia hair comb using basic traditional First Nations weave. You can customise your comb using different materials. I have used emu feathers, polymer clay beads and seeds. The possibilities are endless. We would really love to see what you make. I'm so excited to see if you use plant dyes and what colours you can create. Be sure to share your creations using the hashtag HomeProjectTR on social media. To find out more about what I do, you can head to Roots and Mirigal website. You can also find ready-made hair comb kits in our store section of my site. <laughs>